we have only eight people but everybody has a strength of more than 100 families 200 family where your words are appreciated where your things are uh, they trust you why not start this activity sustainability at a home that's what i call it as sustainable family build sustainable world without families participation sustainable will be only discussion conferences seminars and other things other day uh, doc shai sent me a, a synopsis of whatever the book publication that i've done it once you go it go through it that's what it call uh, call as indigenous people's knowledge indigenous people because people have contributed they have given lot of less whatever they have learned in the life they have contributed there we should learn from them that is the objective behind of that book it is a very interesting book that have gone through it and the language the language is common man language it is not used any kind of a hi fi word to impress people it is a book whatever the six pages i could read out it is expressing rather than impressing so when we do activity in a mass we try to impress people which results in nothing when we do, try to do it in our family we im, we express each family member participate it is my family contribution belongingness comes without belongingness no social activities no social services can result into a desired results instead of that it will aggravate that's the reason last 50 years we are doing world environment day today we are in the same position where we were at 50 years back if the things of, if i say something if everybody start doing it today would have, we would have not discussed about sustainability but unfortunately if we are good in preaching but practicing is zero that's the reason even on the 51st year of a world environment day Waste management is the first priority. It was there in the previous. Today also we talk about it. I would like to make an appeal to the people and your support so that we st start at a home, communicate to the neighbors, the communicate. To, see, once we start with a zero, first is one. The beginning one is important. One can make many, but many can become one. The mark. <laughs>
Then spirituality, exploring the world beyond the materialism, the physical experience. Then at the final time, that it is a, a sequence of events. It is a sequence of events and moments that occurs in a flow. Then we can say that it is a, it is a measurement, which is a measurement of the duration of event or placement of certain effect within the sequence. Then we can say it is a dimension, dimension which is narrating the unit of maybe seconds, minutes, hours, days, months, years, eras, epoch, and different ages that uh, have been described in the history of uh, the existence of a planet and the universe. Then we can say it is a quantity of the universe, event and space. What we are doing now, it is a quantity of what is happening within this space. And when we amplify it into different events that is happening around the world now, that is what uh, time is also all about. And at the end of the day, we can define it in different perspectives. Then we get a complex concept of how we have humanity. Then time, naturally, it is just divided into two, two space, which is the night and, uh, and day, the daylight and the, and, the, and, and the night time, with different events that are happening around them. Then we can say, because of this deliberation, along a period of time, we have different seasons. We have the winter, we have the spring, we have the summer, we have the autumn, with their characteristics that are defining that very timing. Now, answering the focus questions now, how humanity divides, how humanity divides time? You know, we have said that it, it is a measurement, but actually humanity divides time to keep records, to keep the time against events. And that is when the, the earliest one that started was actually 1500 BCE. You know, the world has been in existence for over five billion years now. And the counting of this very date now is just 1500. And before the BCE, we have so many counting of the days and uh, the event of life before the, this very reference of the BCE, AD, and uh, other, other references of the counting. And uh, we have the, the water clock invented by the Greek. We have the mechanical clocks invented in the 13th century. And this is the 20th century now. Then we have the atomic clock, which is now generally what we are using today in our technology which is a, a resonant frequency of atoms to measure time, invented in the 1950s. And that is what we have been able, how humanity has been able to define time. Then we have the general harmonization, when the humanities are agreeing that uh, we have one environment, we are, but we have variations. Then we have the standard time uh, theory that defines uh, how humanity defines time. Then we have different variations, as we are in the morning in Nigeria now, in the afternoon in India, Pakistan afternoon, and then Saudi Arabia afternoon, uh, uh, US in the morning. And uh, that's how we have variation all, the, all over the world because humanity divides time. And uh, that is the reality that uh, we are all living with. But how time divides humanity? I try to brainstorm and look at how time divides humanity. We have the land settlement and boundaries. The event of life has actually divided the whole planet into land masses and boundaries. Then human culture and society. Over the time, we have been able to define our culture. The society has been able to, to get the definition, then development. Then we have a development systems. Different development system has also occurred. We have the commoner, we have the democracy, we have the autocracy, we have different forms of a development system, a leadership system, and the different things that the time has been able to define for us. Then civilization, scientific discoveries, technology innovation. Then we have human sense of purpose and meaning. This is where my book actually focuses on. People believe that a time and event of life actually defines our purpose and meaning. In the holding days when the when the heart started uh, when the heart started evolving, it was agriculture that was the common purpose, how to feed 
how to feed the family, how to feed the community. That is that, that was the definition. As time goes on, that very purpose and sense of uh, meaning uh, expanded till we have the technology of AI, uh, virtual realities, and there's so many of it that uh, we are having today because we want to solve our problems and the needs. Then we have framework for human experience from birth to, to death, and time has shaped such. Yes, we have a serious argument here from the past events because many people believe that they actually time divine what human becomes. But is that the reality? Then human tradition and religious beliefs. Everybody just find himself or herself practicing certain tradition, practicing certain religious belief. Because the time and event has shaped that very culture, evolution of such realities. Then human identity and social structure. The same thing happened here. Then human values, curiosity, and fulfillment. The human direction and journey through life. These are how time has been able to redefine humanity. What are the implications for development and sustainability? I discovered from the summation of this very uh, uh, thoughtfulness that speed is actually one of the major things that time has, it, has been able to control humanity. Speed. The, the second one is quantity. The third one is quality. The next one is originality. And the final one is safety. What is speed? The transportation. From, from from walking to jumping, from jumping to running, from running to biking, from biking to cycling, the, from that to different type of locomotion or transport system we are having to be. Speed, we want to get there fast. Communication, the communication has also been able to, uh, time has been able to also change humanity because of speed in the communication. We are here in different parts of the world, which is not possible about 20, 30, 50 years ago. But now, within seconds, microseconds, my voice reaches uh, the world and uh, I can hear the world from the space where I am, the speed, exploration. People, countries, nations have started exploring the planet. Production, our, product, our production has increased because our population is also increasing. The tons, the millions, the, the barriers and everything that, that, that we are measuring in terms of production are increasing. Exploitation. Likewise, the way we are exploit, we are exploiting resources is also at a faster speed and expansion. The rate at which the settlement is also building up is also at a very fast speed. That is the aspect of the speed and so many others. Then we have the quantity. The, the food, the shelter, the houses, the estates, the machines, different machine computers, commodities that are being produced from the industries, infrastructure to cater for, for the comfort and the comfortability and the basic needs of the human being, then produces from the farm, agriculture, and the different aspects of the natural uh, systems. We have them in, in quantity. Then the quality. We want to get a better side of everything we have in quantity, then we begin to, to do so many things. Then originality, that is, this is where we are having the issue. As we are exploring all the, the time is shaping humanity against the speed, against the quantity, against the quality, then originality begin to depreciate. The territories, there is no clear boundary of uh, which people are occupying a certain territory today because many of these very territories have so many immigrants. Territory identity, that is originality. The culture identity, originality. Habitat identity, originality. Nature itself, identity, originality. Interaction and the population itself. Then we have the safety. That is where we are now realizing that uh, because we are compromised on all these things, we have the planet, we have the human, we have the other lives that are on the planet and on, on the entire universe. The development, the resources, they are all being compromised on the safety aspects. That, this is how uh, the, the relationship between time and humanity has been able to bring about the issue of development and sustainability effects. Let us now look at the reimagination of humanity and time with the lessons. From what I have displayed, I, I come to a conclusion that humanity currently over exploiting natural resources, causing environmental degradation, 
unsustainable practices that threaten the well-being of the future generations. Yes, that is what the SDGs is uh, uh, in agreement with. The humanity's consumption pattern at the moment are unsustainable and evident in the context of climate change, leading to significant environmental and social impact. That is also the SDG related. Then how do we build a, build a sustainable future with these lessons? Sustainability is an essential in ensuring that a humanity relationship with time is responsible and protective of the planet's heart and future generation well-being. The sustainable future that adopts practices and policies that balance the economic growth with environmental protection, social equity, and intergenerational equity. The sustainable future that ensures that a planet's natural system remain resilient and healthy over time. And what we are looking at in this very context is actually the speed, the quantity, the quality, the originality, and the safety. So, like I said, the book is uh, featuring to just tell the story of uh, how man and how uh, the event of time and humanity has not been able to change, how man is actually situated within the seasons and the period of the year. We have 365 days in a year, and in this very measurement, we have been able to identify great men across this very uh, timing, and we have been able to also have the variety of different greatness in terms of achievement and landmarks from this very uh, analysis of the time and the events, which means that uh, naturally, man is not affected by the changes in the events and the timing, but actually man is influencing because of evolution, what is happening on the planet and everything that's around in the, uh, that's around us in our environment. So these are my thoughts and these are my submission. So I I close my I close my uh, uh, presentation here and I will open up this for discussion. <laughs>
right? It is chosen for you, right? And uh, the identity that you are nurtured and the cognitive process of how you are, the, the process of true how you develop cognition is inherently, it starts off with the family unit, then the community, then the culture. So Vijay Kumar is right that at the end of the day, you know, it is up to families to have the first pivot of culture and the first pivot of traditions. So perhaps, you know, along the way, culture and the knowledge gap that cultures had, the tradition had stopped us from understanding the reality of the things that we don't see. You know, waste has always been defined as waste. Perhaps the label of the term waste itself is incorrect because by labeling something, as, as waste, right? You create the cognition that it's not wanted, right? Now that we have understood science better, we've understood the ability through the passage of time. And, and to be perfectly honest, the pandemic, while devastating, uh, the, the one good thing that, the one positive thing, there's no good things, but the positive outcome that has possibly derived from it is the explosion of how we have used strategic time. When, when, when you know you are short of time, time becomes a little bit more strategic and a little bit more vital to you. So I think during this period, you had the world's greatest scientists and minds and developers and entrepreneurs and people. Some of us are here, all of us are here today with catalysts and beacons that actually want to change. And perhaps uh, the pandemic provided the best opportunity for us to rethink how we do things and to reshape things, right? To develop new ideas, new processes, and to combine and integrate ideas that we have never thought possible before. And, and uh, as time has evolved, right, beyond the family unit, which is what Vijay Kumar said, most of us consume our information through different sources, you know, uh, and, and family is pivotal, but I think generally how we consume our information and the influences that we have come around in school with our friends through social media and the social learning that we learn along the way. So uh, why is it that uh, he's right, Vijay Kumar, if we look at the construct of time, 50 years ago, we, we started talking about the environment, but we didn't have the internet then. We didn't have mass communication. You know, everything was on print, right? As, as you know, you know, uh, uh, how the history of communication that started from, from, from voice to print to digital. We must understand that today in, in the world that we are in, all right, the ability, like you said earlier, Ambassador Said, that you know, in a, in a mini second, you can speak across the world with your voice and your information. So we must use time wisely. You know, I have, uh, I'm a very interesting, uh, I've got insp interesting inspirations when it comes to leadership. And, you know, I'm inspired by Lee Kuan Yew. I'm inspired by Alex Ferguson. I'm inspired by Hazrat Ali. I'm inspired by the Prophet Muhammad, peace be on him, upon him. And I'm inspired by lots. Uh, I, I'm even inspired by Jacinta Ardern, the former prime minister of New Zealand. Each of us as leaders, as humans, are vessels, right? We are vessels with the ability to change. And what we do with our time, what, what did Nelson Mandela do with his time? What, what, what did Gandhi do with his time? What did all of the great men, Mary Curie, all of these people, right? I, I think the opportunity for time here is to use time to be the best version of yourself, right? So I think at the end of the day, when, when time has ended, the measurement of how we have valued time uh, uh, will be the sum of what we have done with it, what we have individually done with it, what we have cultures and societies and nations have done with it. So I, I completely agree with you, and I I, I appreciate the, the 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 insight and the detail and how we look at the micro. You know, dots are the details of things, right? So connecting the dots is very important, and time is is the ultimate measurement tool for the details of things. So I wish, I believe this is a good catalyst for us to look at time of how it's been used and how we should use time further forward because we really don't know how much time we've left. Thank you.
Mohit, first of all, thank you so much, not only for inviting me, but also for the great presentation you have just given. And also, um, Turab, uh, it was great insights from you. Um, I completely agree with Turab's uh, suggestions, and I wanted to elaborate on one or two things he said already. So one of the thing was the knowledge gap. So that is a very important point we have to consider because um, as a scientist myself, we have um, like models and predictions about how the future of um, like sustainability goes or like how long we could um, live in the earth without with having like a, a minimum temperature, like a habitable temperature in the system and how the climate change is going to go. But it's uh, as if you look at the common man, then there is a gap between the scientists who knows the knowledge, but the people who are ready to practice it. And it is very important for us to make a bridge between them and um, give this knowledge out into the world. So I believe that these kind of like discussions uh, is important and it is vital to bring this bridge into position. And one of the other things I want to say is like, uh, as um, Vijay Kumar already said, the, uh, the family is the backbone of all these sustainable uh, practices we build up. And I agree with uh, Anamta when she said that uh, she gave, um, like they provide education for the students in the schools because they are the future generation who have to carry on this light of sustainable future. And we have to educate them in how to carry this forward. So in my opinion, we have to combine these two ideas and uh, combine them such a way that we would be able to practice this at home and also in uh, school. So the students will have a, a better understanding of how this is done, but that is not enough. We need, um, the support from our society, from our government. And if you look our... at um, when we talk about the time, so if you look at uh, ancient Egyptians or Romans, you could see the aqueducts they made or the sustainable, um, like, you know, farming concepts they had. So those things are very vital. And we could actually think of how to implement these things in our modern day architectures and modern day. Uh, like uh, farming and biodiversity. So it's very important for us to take a look at our uh, past and learn from that and implement those um, things in for our better future. and I really appreciate your presentation and uh, also very well said to Rav and Alina and I totally agree with you people and also Dr. Vijay Kumar about starting these moments at a home like it's a, a grassroots level and uh, everything starts at home as it is said and we could uh, practice reuse recycle and things like that from our home and also building a sustainable future is a critical goal for humanity in the face of uh, this uh, pressing environmental, social, and economical ch challenges. Uh, achieving this uh, sustainability uh, involves making decisions and not only making decisions, but also taking actions towards these decisions. Like uh, we 
we cannot like stop here like we are just discussing and stop here we also like uh, implement these things which we are saying in our lives with our families teach our families and like motivate them also when i started uh, the foundation my family members were like not very involved now they tell me like they said that don't take this plastic use a paper bag reuse these things and they are the one now they use uh, three different bins in my home and it all like uh, he, and um, like uh, dr vijay kumar said that it all started at home because we have a feeling of belongingness and we should like have this uh, feeling of belongingness to our mother earth also because it's our home and it's our only home like people are like trying to go to mars and here and there but now we should protect our like present home which is earth and uh, also we started the moment in our second home which is our schools and uh, we teach uh, we started from our school like we teach taught uh, the uh, student from kindergarten in their arts and craft classes to make uh, uh, sustainable waste management and these things and we distributed that uh, things to poor people in our city which also gave a feeling of um, uh fulfillness to those children like they contributed something to the society they made like organic uh, cotton apparel hand clothing and also recycled polyester clothing these clothes we distributed to them and also uh, also like uh, we cooked the food and uh, we also like um, Uh, did a waste management all over our cities so and with the help of these children they also get motivated and i think in the future they may start something like that and they went home they like uh, teach their parents about it and their whole family like if we are teaching one student a whole family is getting involved in this they te- the family is teaching their neighbors and everyone so like that we can like spread this moment not only talk about it thank you Amazing to be here. I mean, you guys are amazing. I've I've learned a lot, uh, Mr. Turab. You inspired me with that short presentation. Um, every other person, you've been strong at summarizing your thoughts. And I mean, I can write a full book from this little time I've spent here. It's it's been awesome. One one minute. I just finished a community development work. right i did a documentary on on flood impact in certain communities in niger delta region of nigeria you know i'm i'm a nigerian right and my interest was and in development if if you're used to social development there's something that is called historical profiling and vulnerability timeline and what that means is for you to be able to prefer any solution you must understand the issues and in understanding the issues you must be able to connect it with your history you must understand the timeline the changes that occurred at every point in time and that helps you to give a concrete um solution or a concrete framework because you can be able to benchmark where are we coming from where are we right now and where are we going to and as mr turab said you, i mean timing this whole thing with timing is just the knowledge gap right as as we improve in time we improve in knowledge and my mentor says something he says there's nothing that is new everything is just amplifying what already exists you know you have something that exists and then you amplify it but the crazy thing about this generation sometimes is where we are lacking is that we are just going with the flow people don't really stop to check what has been existing people don't stop to check the culture i mean i'm i'm a climate 
justice advocate and I'm community based. As much as I love what is going on with the cops and, and all those conferences, I prefer to understand the issues communities by communities because they have unique experiences, right? And most of the times these guys are the victims of the climate crisis. They, they might not understand the technicalities involved, but they know the issues, right? They, they understand. And, and the good thing about, I stayed with those farmers for about a week and I saw that many of them lost their livelihood as a result of flooding. And when I sat with them, I said, okay, help me to understand this climate change. I've studied it. I've studied the theory. I've seen it, but help me to understand. Give me your, your historical profiling, vulnerability timeline. How was this flooding five years ago? And how did it increase over time? And they'll be able to tell you plainly that it, it was never like this. You know, of course, we had water here and there, but it's, it gets worse as time goes on. That helps you to prove the case of climate advocates, because a lot of people don't believe that there's anything like climate change until you do historical profiling, until you see that, I mean, of course, we have weather patterns, but this climate change is different. This is a lot of things are happening very fast. Right. And the danger of it is that we don't have enough time to prepare for the changes our world is experiencing. Right. But what gives you this knowledge? It is your ability to go back and do a comprehensive historical profiling. And the good thing about learning history and understanding the events of time is that it gives you and I always say this, there's a difference between knowledge and wisdom. Knowledge is is the I mean, you know, the issue. But wisdom is you understand the process. You, you know how to tackle the issue. You know how to engage the issue to bring out a solution from it. But a lot of us have plenty knowledge, especially the theory guys, right? But most times when you see the community guys like ourselves, you know, people that go into the communities and even many of these elders, right? So I met a lot of fish farmers that could tell you the solution that if, if we put these things in place, we won't lose any fish. And many of these things are things I read in United Nations reports, um, UNCC framework for building flood-proof communities. Many of these guys understand these things without reading those materials because they are in the communities. And what happens is that through testing, they test strong things, they try and they fail, they try and they fail. They are able to come up with best, best practices to help them navigate through the situation they face. So in summary, um, it's very important for us to be able to measure our presence, forecast our future by observing the events of the past. That is the only way we can come up with sustainable change. Look at what we are doing wrong. Look at what the people in the past did wrong. I mean, right now, I'm beginning to understand that the whole industrialization, even if it was very good, they didn't, R.D. Rockefeller did not consider the climate crisis. I mean, many of these guys didn't consider, but we've learned that, okay, now, if we are innovating anything, we have to consider ESG. We have to consider the environmental impact. That's the lesson we've gotten from the past. So it's good for us to navigate, understand the issues of the past, measure our presence, and then from this two data, we'll be able to create models and frameworks that will be sustainable enough to last us in a transgenerational manner. Thank you very much. I think I'm done. Wow, thank you. And uh, I think I, I was aware of that very project actually, and uh, when the results actually came out, I was surprised that what has happened is, uh, is there something that is wrong? Because when we have a community or community that are climate smart, but that are still affected by the climate change, then there is a problem. Thank you, Dr. Saeed, for organizing uh, such a wonderful uh, activity.
and uh, everybody's knowledge everybody's experience makes us to understand the things better way i i can only think in a one direction somebody will say that because their experience their expertise matters which i have forgotten which i can learn through such kind of a sense and in my uh, personal opinion it may be having a different experience or opinion about it that's the reason i said uh, i still would like to say that yes school is the best place to start the education to the people but uh, that education that information what we gain in the school it needs to be practiced then only it becomes it inculcates into our day to day life that can only happen in my home to my kids because we trust each other we believe each other we respect each other to practice things you need a time and you don't need a restriction and thirdly you should be motivated for your participation also i'm a father whatever i say is right no that is not a opinion even the kid says today i found out this in the school each family member listen to them very carefully and try to inculcate in the day to day life that can bring a change rather than just providing information is not a knowledge as delo was saying uh, saying that he has done a work a documentary on a flood what is flood why the floods are happening why the floods are happening the earth absorbing water capacity has become zero overflow of water is happening more due to that overflow it reaches to the sea and because of a heat water gets back to us in the form of a rain what we need to address there is how best we can make it the absorbing capacity there it comes a question of vegetation the plants it is all interconnected interrelated plants are not only for oxygen giving or carbon dioxide they are the biggest resources for absorbing the water through the root system to the ground level if it starts 10% of the water absorption even the ground level water goes up water is the one thing which we need to digest it is a very hard to digest it if i can drink water anywhere in the world and if i can digest it that is known as immunity not immunity is not a water is a simple thing if you can digest any kind of a water your immunity is working perfectly so let's not convert whatever the doctor says share the information the basic emotions sentiments they are the basic humanity factors that comes only in a, a small group of people so whatever you are doing it is highly commendable appreciable and everything is possible try to implement the same take to your home also then your family members will be proud that my dad is doing something my sister is doing something my mother is doing something to the society that the prideness will communicate to their friend circle this is what my opinion about all about it instead of one is taking to the mass second one is implementing it up both are equally important no one is big or small don't compare it if you start comparing it inferiority complex or a superiority complex comes into the my mind let's not compare it because this is also good this is also good do the justice and give a time decide on a what time what should be done if i addressing the people of a lakhs of people who are not aware about a b c d of a, a technological words if i talk only technological words it is a waste of my time also and their all time also let's come to a one level and uh, as uh, rajwan sir said it is internet facility the communication is there but in their speech they said mohammad taib gangar is one of their emotion that time no internet was there that was because of the their theories their philosophy their concern 
the care towards the community has spread all over the world rather than communication skills it has been experienced by the family members it is experienced by more family members i respect those communications i i don't want to communicate to lakhs of people practice zero i would like to communicate to only one family member i would like to make see it happen if the my son sees it's happening in my home insects are not there you will you'll be surprised i have more than 3500 plants in my home and i don't have one insect in my home so i removed the misconception that the plants create insects create noise create uh, uh, unhealthy atmosphere no you should take care it properly you nothing can be go wrong and that's the reason it is all interconnected interrelated and we are all interdependent we are independent but we are all interdependent let's respect others plus points try to inculcate in my life so that i become one among them rather than i am right you are wrong we are nowhere so this with that note i would like to say thank you dr shahid with you actually for uh, for presentation thank you i appreciate it but i still also for uh, to, to, to be uh, updated for knowledge and education actually you have to contact now we, we 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 already now can be able to contact online with all the world it's global now before maybe since many years ago we don't be able uh, to contact together but now we can be able to contact with all culture just we can be able to change the climate change together uh, start in school to 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 uh, to update the education for for students because new generation they will be update their knowledge in the life i think start from school that's very important as we together work on this issue that would be great the world needs stakeholders focus for education to update knowledge for all students around the world now the yeah and so uh that's not the end actually that's start right now um uh, i will i will share my project to uh, make more uh natural learning for all students around the world mm -hmm. it would be coming soon because i remember in uh, t4 education and uh unesco and i'm so busy for my project my project will be changed the education around the world because i start to create my project since more than 10 years ago right now but i i, I think it will be help the students for for good life in new generation they will be creative in their life i'm here also uh, at any time if you need especially in africa because i am one from the family from egypt that's like uh, mm -hmm. the yeah the one country from africa when i traveled uh, to uh, more than many countries in africa i was in botswana i was in ghana i was in senegal i'm i'm so happy when i was there because i contact with the lovely students there i i feel that i have to uh, really really support them I, yeah, I, I have a power for education to deliver what I have from knowledge in education. Please. But I hear for all over the world, all the students around the world, I love it to do that. Mm -hmm. If you have idea, just share to me in uh, what I don't know how you can uh, contact me in, in, yes. in uh, WhatsApp. Yes, yeah, I will be ready. Yes, I will be ready because we have Thank to you. grow with Africa. Please, please give me the power to give that for Africa. That's my, my family there. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. Thank well, you very much. This was an, an amazing yeah. time.
um, in one minute, what can I say? I mean, as I said before, use the past to reference the present and plan better for the future. There's a lot to do in Africa. There's a lot to do in Nigeria, which I'm passionate about. And God's willing, I'll connect with everybody here to see how we can, you can help us with your knowledge and give us mentorship as we go forward. I'm a very young guy, right? So just doing the best we could do. And I would love to connect with everybody. Yeah, thank uh, you. Sharing their insights. And um, to wrap up, um, I want to again bring up the point of knowledge cap. So I would like to mention that like we are working towards bridging the gap, but also keep in mind please keep in mind that like there is a lot of misinformation regarding the sustainable future and finding out what is the correct one and what is the accurate information is very difficult and as a uh, scientist myself we have been uh, developing a, a tool using machine learning algorithms which could actually if you just add your uh, news report into the machine, then you could clearly see which of these uh, um, results are accurate and not. So I would suggest all of you to like look for information which are accurate and in order to bridge, a, bridge the gap. So as a um, advocate of uh, sustainability, it is our duty to do this. And thank you very much. Information, correctness, cross-checking, authenticity, and validation before the use and even communicating, not to mislead the society. You yes, Ms. Anamta? For the program, and uh, you keep it up. Just uh, one word. So I joined the section lead Thank that you, could deduce from uh, what we are discussing that it has to do with education and development, the bridging of the past with the present, and uh, I work with Mirror of Education and uh, been trying our best to do that. So later we'll be able to contribute in the next uh, or the subsequent uh, program. Thank you. No, I, I, I arrived here very, very late. I was on trip too. Thank you so much. It is a pleasure meeting with H and everyone here. So my little message is that Please let, all, let us all work together to fill up the gap in promoting the sustainability across the world. Because uh, we have a lot to cover. Actually, the, the SDGs we are hoping to cover before 2030, we have a lot to cover in them. Because uh, especially here where I'm staying in my country, Nigeria, actually we have a lot to cover. So please, I'm urging everyone to, to work together so that we can fill this gap in promoting the sustainability across the, our uh, Nigeria, Africa, and the world at large. Thank you very much, Dr. Sahid. Uh, in one minute, how we can summarize everything. Uh, consider this for a second. The planet is our customer. If we look at the planet as our customer, uh, Mother Nature is our customer. Mother Nature has given us love, and Mother Nature also needs love back. Now, if we treat the planet as a customer, if we treat Mother Nature as a customer, we would understand, right, that we have been, uh, we owe our customer a debt that we have not paid back. And this debt has accumulated. And the impact of this debt accumulation through, through waste and unsustainable practices, the linear economies of the world is directly responsible for climate change. So at the end of the day, the climate change is a generation of a system created by men and cultures and societies and economies and businesses. So we need to start from scratch and understand that there is a point where we cannot cross that tipping point. It is more than likely that we have already crossed the tipping point. However, we need to reverse it. Right? At the end of the day, the future is the acquisition of knowledge and, and the distribution of knowledge, right? So that we are able to make decisions as a planet together. Uh, the world is divided into three people currently. The people who know, right, that the current systems are damaging the planet, but economies and profits and are taking precedence. Greed is taking precedence. 
then there's another group of people, people like us, people who know about what's happening and want to stop it and want to change it. And then there's a third group of people, the people who, who don't know any of this and are going through their normal lives based on the decisions that are made by the first group of people. So collectively, what we really need to do is understand that yes, it is right. We need to start from ourselves. We need to start from our family. We need to start from our schools. So we need a culture. We need a culture that will unwaste the world. Unwaste. This very perspective is also very important because uh, I think the aspect of how to bring a common man into the picture is actually what the SDG has not been able to, uh, to actually get right. Because most of this very knowledge we are digging out, they really discuss issues around social development. They are in the communities. They are with the indigenous people. They are with the common man. And they are the ones that can actually tell us the story of their past and what we are experiencing now. So actually, know, okay, how do we move to the future? I, 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 I quite agree with you on that very, uh, very important note. I want to leave uh, us with uh, a wrapping word from my, from my own uh, thoughts of this very discussion. If we are able to actually take a evaluation of our activities from the past to the present, and we now scale it on a measurement of time, can we be able to actually meet up the sustainable development goals? That is a question that I put to, uh, to the global society. If we are able to, in a quantum of the activities that have been happening on the planet, we are able to actually evaluate it and now put it on the measurement of time. Can we use that very dimension to actually know where our future lies to achieve the sustainable development goal? Thank you. And uh, Mr. Vijay Kumar, please uh, give us uh, the post of science and also the closing uh, of this session. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Said. And uh, I take this opportunity to thank you each and everyone to be a part of the session and make it interesting, interactive, and understandable to each other. And each one's subject is very good. And collectively, we can reach the goal where we, we all want to reach there. I may be taking this route or you may be taking other route. But finally, we would like to reach the place everyone's interest is same. So what I would like to, uh, what I understood here is we are starting with what we have rather than what we don't have it. Once we start what we have it, the success or the achievement with what we have will definitely create what we don't have it. That capability comes in us that is known as confidence building. That will...